This is now the 11th day that I've been on hunger strike for G20 action on climate change. I feel very passionately that this G20 really has to start doing something and there are various straightforward reasons for this. The G20 is 85% of the world's economy. They're the ones who have basically created this problem. Uh, they're the ones who have benefited from this problem, from the, all the pollution and uh, burning of fossil fuels. And therefore, they are the ones who really should put their nose, have access to the grindstone and try sorting out some very positive action on climate change. We know what is happening. It's very clear to the world now what is actually happening. There's no point in denying it. The question now is, really, is what are we going to do about it? And at least now we've had China and the, the USA um, agree on a definitely a positive action towards solving climate change with various goals by 2030. How those are achieved is possibly an even more important issue now. Um, whether it's through nuclear power, which most people don't want, or whether it's through other forms. America's using coal seam gas a lot, and we're not very happy with that. That has incredible problems. But at least they're beginning to talk about it. Um, and so when I, when I wrote to the uh, Prime Minister, and his department about three weeks ago, asking them whether climate change was on the G20 agenda. They wrote back and said two things. Uh, one was, oh, the G20 is primarily an economic forum. As if to say that <laughs> thus it was irrelevant, climate change was irrelevant to, to, because it was an economic forum. There's, in the long term, if we don't solve climate change, the economy is really going to be in deep trouble. We obviously have to sort out climate change. But mankind, like in solving almost any problem mankind has, in doing that, mankind will discover lots more technologies, they'll make many more discoveries, and that will create progress, jobs, and so on. So, it's ridiculous to say, absolutely ridiculous to say, that climate change is not an economic problem. It sh very strongly is. And the growth that they're going for, the extra 2% growth, and the extra infrastructure spend they want, a lot of it would be enhanced if they actually really got behind it and did some stuff on climate change. The other thing they said in that letter was, um, they, there's not that climate change wasn't on the agenda, but the Prime Minister thought that the topic might come up. And I thought, honestly, what, what a total lack of leadership to, to just think it might come up. I mean, honestly, it's just mind-boggling, mind-boggling. So I've actually written to every single Liberal MP to say that this denial of climate change it's, it's just ridiculous. They have to stop it. I mean, it's, 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 you can't keep denying the truth. In the end, the truth, like a train, will come and run you over. And so they're going to have to change their policies. And if, as in the current situation, their denial of reality over this actually um, belittles every other policy they come up with. Because we have no idea whether it's based on evidence, on trying to please vested interests, or whatever. As, as long as they don't, as long as they keep denying reality on this sort of topic, they may be doing it on everything else, and just, you know, feeding their own trains. The other thing when I started looking into um, doing a hunger strike, is I started looking at hunger strikes and elves in the world and people dying from hunger. And I was absolutely stunned. I really was stunned by the number of people that die each and every year 
from carbon pollution. The WHO has figures of it, but we're talking of hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, dying just from carbon pollution every year. And then on top of that, you have all the effects of climate change, such as uh, we've got the droughts, the famines, uh, etc., which causes massive deaths all over the world. Uh, you've got the floods, um, like, uh, what is it, uh, Bangladesh they are, uh, in August, I think, this year. Uh, they had a flood and they had, uh, I think, 200, was it? 100 or so thousand people died in those floods. A while ago, we had the uh, floods in Myanmar, uh, where it was a storm surge with a uh, rise high tide. And that's very flat, low ground, and it just swept in. And um, I think it's, what is it, 138,000 people are known to have died just from that storm. Uh, if you look at um, Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines recently, um, that's had, I think, 1,600 deaths just from this effect. If you look close to us, you've got Melbourne, uh, the heat waves in Melbourne, uh, where we had uh, three to 400 people die just caused by the heat wave. And you had all the people, 183, I think it is, died in the fires. This weekend, temperatures are expected to get to 40, so all over the place there'll be bushfires, and I suspect a lot of older people will die caused by the heat. And the trouble is it's definitely going to get worse because we know now that there is a 40-year lag in the rising of the ocean temperatures. And so what is in the ocean already, that momentum is going to last for at least 20, 30 years now, from now. So it's not going to affect, I can't do anything that will improve my life. So what we have to do, we have to stop climate change for the sake of our children and our grandchildren and our grandchildren's children. And in the process, even hopefully, try and reduce the number of people dying as we speak from climate change. Thanks very much.